Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian. Today I'm doing a bit of a different sort of pattern drafting tutorial here on the channel. Normally we see me doing entire sewing diary, like project diary style sewing projects, where I'll do like show you the design I want, talk about it a little bit, show you how I modify my block patterns to create that design, and then I will maybe make a mock-up and then make the final garment and show you what it turned out like. So I usually do from start to finish like that. But today I'm just gonna be showing you the lazy, cheaty, sneaky method of making a bodice block, but not from scratch. I will be, no, don't worry, no, just put down the pitchforks, pitchforks. I will be showing you how to draft a basic block pattern or a sloper slash block pattern soon from measurements, from like a measurement chart. I actually prefer to draft all patterns from like standardized measurements and then modify them to fit me. But we'll talk about that later. I will be doing that video soon. It's just gonna be kind of dry and very geometry heavy. And I'm a bit worried about how boring that's gonna come out. But before we get to that madness, uh, probably next month I'm thinking, hopefully, I wanted to show you this like easy, lazy gals method for getting a bodice block that I think works just as well. Um, and I always think when it comes to pattern drafting, as opposed to, although we don't like altering, I, we all know I don't like altering clothing. I do think when it comes to pattern drafting, starting with something and then modifying it is much easier than starting from scratch. Um, it's like the opposite of how I feel about sewing. When it comes to sewing, I like to start from scratch. I like to make my own garments as opposed to modify them. When it comes to patterns, I like to just modify an existing pattern. I think that's much easier. I don't think there's any, uh, nobody needs to be like, you know, gatekeeping this situation. Like just because you made your dress from a pattern that you bought or you maybe you bought and you modified, doesn't make it any less than, than someone who drafted it completely from scratch. You know, we're all out here trying to have a good time in the home sewing sphere, are we not? So I don't like it when people get judgy about that sort of thing and I shan't be judging you at all. And instead I will be showing you this lazy method for getting a bodice block. Now, of course they do actually have sloper slash fitting shell slash block-ish patterns available from the major pattern companies. And I will put links to those in the description below. So if you wanted to just buy a pattern that is practically nearly done for you that you can use, maybe just fit it to you, make your make the size that is most similar to your measurements, fit that to you, whatever, like, you know, your shoulder slope or a full bust adjustment, whatever adjustments need to be made to that sort of a pattern to fit you best, and then use that as your block pattern moving forward. I think that's probably the easiest method if you wanna start using a block to do pattern drafting, but not have to like actually make the blocks themselves. I don't think there's any shame in that. Go ahead and do it. Like you will learn a lot about pattern drafting and eventually you can put that in use when it comes to drafting your own blocks in the future. So I say, you know, start pattern drafting the easiest way it is, like the way it is easiest to you or makes the most sense to you. I'm getting off course already, but there are sloper slash fitting shell patterns out there. I will link to them in the description. You will also find links to a lot of different one and two dart bodices that I think are good patterns to do this kind of modification too. Today, I'm gonna be jumping over to the blue patterning table of doom here, as I always call it in my sewing room and showing you how I take two different commercial patterns, look at the bodice patterns that come with those and show you what I would do, what I would change on them to make them into working bodice block patterns for me. And yes, I am very casually dressed today because I've been working on my new backdrop set that you all, you all see soon here. It's taking me again, as usual, a lot longer than I thought. So seeing as I spent most of my day earlier covered in wood glue, I am in just casual clothes. So you'll have to forgive me for the less glam than usual situation. Okay, so over here on the table, I have two different McCall's patterns that I was able to find in my old, old stash of patterns. And I'm sure these are, you know, 10 years old. So I'm not sure these exact patterns are still available from McCall's um, or in general, uh, but you probably could find them on Etsy actually, because a lot of patterns end up on Etsy and eBay if they don't get used. So even if they're old and discontinued, they may be over there, but this is gonna apply to all similar patterns to these. So. Um, I have a dress pattern here and I have like a shirt dress pattern here. And both I think you can use to create a functioning bodice block, quote unquote, a lazy gal block um, to use for doing pattern drafting and using in your own home sewing and um, using as a base as a block to go off of from. So this dress here has a single dart here in the waist. Um, it doesn't really have a good set in sleeve. I would prefer something that had like a uh, short or long sleeve option. Oh, this one does have a long sleeve. Okay, so we can maybe use this long sleeve here to make a little standard sleeve, like the kind that I use in my sewing room. Um, I use like the little short sleeve version of a sleeve. You're, I mean, with a basic block normally or a sloper fitting shell, that kind of thing, usually you would make a long sleeve, um, but I normally just 
I don't make a lot of long sleeve garments and you can always, all, the most important part about a sleeve pattern is the curve at the top that fits the armhole that fits into the pattern. So I always just keep a short sleeve pattern around. If I want to make it long, I can just trace a long one. Um, so anyway, getting off course already. We just got over here. This, I'm going to go ahead and go through this and take the bodice that would be the closest to fitting me according to their measurement chart here and cut that out just so we can start with this bodice pattern. And then I will do the same with this pattern as well. I'll go ahead into get in here and grab the bodice pieces out of here. But this one, again, it has, um, it, this one has a two dart bodice, which is what I prefer to use on my, that's what I use on my block. Um, but you can definitely use a one dart to do pattern drafting. And you can also modify the one dart into a two dart pattern. No problem. I'll show you. Um, so I'll take this bodice pattern out of here, the bodice part of this dress out of this one. And I will again, go through and show you how to use a pattern like this one to create a basic block that you can use in your own sewing and on pattern drafting misadventures. I am sorry about the furnace and all that stuff making a lot of noise in the background here, but hopefully you can't really hear it too much. I wanted to talk a little bit about why this dress pattern as opposed to any other dress pattern. There are many patterns that would not work to do this with. Um, I guess I didn't really clarify why I was choosing this one and the other. Um, and the main reason here is the thing I'm looking to make is this. This is the kind of basic bodice block that I use to create everything else. This is very similar to the kind of block I created in fashion school. Um, it's a two dart front bodice, um, just a simple little set in sleeve. I have them shorter because I can always use this to draft a long sleeve if I want to, or to draft other sleeves if I need to. But I'm looking for a, you know, flat front as in the closure in the back, high necked, two dart front bodice. Now this dress here has, oh, and also, this shoulder line is along where it should be, like along the shoulder line, as in it's not like in here somewhere. Like if you were working with a strapless bodice, this still, even though this, or not strapless, sleeveless bodice, um, it still has the armhole sitting along the shoulder line where it needs to be for us, um, where it needs to be to set in a sleeve, which is why this dress has both a sleeveless and a sleeved versions available because the bodice is the same for even having a set in sleeve because that armhole is set at the shoulder point up here. So you wanna find one that's like this because if you have a sleeveless dress but the neckline is a halter or something, you're gonna have to do more work to get it to be a normal shoulder line like this. So part of the reason I chose this pattern was because it has a single dart front and then the rest is very simple and it has that shoulder line or that armhole in the right place for doing sleeves, which is what we want. Of course, if you wanted to use the block you'll eventually make from this to make a pattern like this with um, with with straps <laughs> set closer to the neck as opposed to out here on the shoulder, you could of course modify that, but as a to create a block pattern, we want something that is the most simple and standardized as possible, this so that in the future I can make modifications working from here, but we want to have the highest neckline possible. And then anytime I want to make a pattern, I will change the neckline how I desire. I want to have the sleeves as basic as possible and I will change those as I desire. But we're creating the most basic pattern possible. And this one is just already quite close to this. And that's why it's a good pattern to choose to do a modification like this. So my goal here is to take this bodice pattern and turn it into this one. Um, by raising the neckline a little bit, coming in on the shoulder a little bit and up on the neck a little bit because this neck is a little lower than the bodice block neckline should be. Um, and then this already has a single dart, which I can split into two darts. So I will show you how to do that. And then the sleeve, I'm really just going to, they have usually on patterns like this, they have an area where there's a line where you can make the sleeve shorter or longer. I'm just gonna use that line as like my cut line for the sleeves. So what I've done is I've cut out this bodice pattern here and I just cut out the size 14 and I've just transferred all that pattern onto patterning paper. Um, I just think it's easier to work on a little bit more of a substantial paper. You could use wrapping paper. You could use alphanumeric paper like me. You could use paper that you found at the craft store, whatever you want to use, um, butcher paper, whatever you want to do. Um, this is just a tracing exactly of the pattern front, just as it is this McCall's 5927. Um, so this is the bodice front, and I've done the same with the back. And the relevant marks I have transferred here include 
the little notches for the sleeve just because I want this sleeve pattern to still be able to match up into this pattern. So I'll keep those notches. And then I, of course, transferred the dart markings onto here too, even though I haven't traced this dart. There's the point. I haven't traced the dart legs in yet, but on here I have this big dart here. The other interesting thing about this pattern is that it does have like cup size variations. So this is a size, I'm cutting out a size 14 D cup here, which means I probably would not have to do a full bust adjustment to this pattern because it's probably already inherent in here. Um, but I would see in a muslin whether or not I needed to add more like cup fullness. But because this is one of those patterns where it actually has different pattern pieces, depending on the cup size, that full bust adjustment might already be inherent in this pattern, which is nice. The other thing that to remember that is inherent in these patterns is that there is a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance already on this pattern, which means the tracings already have that 5 inch, eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, normally I only add half an inch seam allowance. So were I to use this pattern in my sewing, I would probably go around and cut off that extra eighth of an inch from the outside edge of all of this so that I could have half inch seam allowances uh, because that's just what I'm used to. That's what I sew on autopilot is half inch seam allowances. And um, of course, if I use half inch seam allowances on this with a five inch, when there's a five eighths seam allowance already on the pattern, it would come out a tiny bit big. So I would want to remove that extra eighth of an inch from the very outside edge. Um, of course, this here on the pattern on here, has this little arrow here where it says cut center front on fold. So I transferred that onto here as well. So this is on a fold and therefore does not need or does not have seam allowance. It doesn't have it in the pattern and it would not need anything because it's not gonna be, there will be no seam here in the center front of this bodice piece. Now for the back, same thing. This is gonna have a 5 eighths of a seam, in 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I can't speak anymore tonight, don't know what's going on. Now on this pattern piece, there is a marking for the center back and it is 5 eighths of an inch in. Um, so like they are giving you, they are giving you a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance on the center back to do your zipper as well. On your, your master block pattern that you are making here, you can decide whether or not you want to add more if you like having a bit more overlap in the back for a zipper or not, or if 5 eighths is gonna be enough for you. You can make that kind of decision, but on the pattern piece, it does tell you that that, that is the center back line. And that is important because if you decide to make something where the closure is in the front instead and you add seam allowance here or add a placket or add a zipper here in the center front, you're going to want to know where that center back line is because you will cut that on the fold instead in that case. Um, so this is what that pattern looks like right out of the out of the tissue traced onto our paper. And then this is the sleeve pattern. This is a long sleeve pattern here because the other ones were like cap sleeves and I didn't want to deal with it. So what I've done is I've just traced this sleeve using this line where you lengthen or shorten here. I just basically drew that line on here. And then I kept the notches for the front and back on here because I easily get confused what is the front and back of my sleeves. And so I think, you know, this curve isn't that different. So I like to keep it marked on here and on the pattern pieces as well. So I did transfer that pattern marking as well onto this sleeve. Now I'm not gonna be making any modifications to this sleeve because really as it is, it's just straight sided or like mostly straight sided. I might take this down and square out these sleeves, but like you can keep it a little bit tapered like this. This sleeve should work fine um, setting into this uh, as long as McCall's has done their job. Um, so in the muslin, I would cut this out and put it into this just so I can uh, come across any fit issues here, but I'm not going to do anything to this sleeve pattern today just because it's essentially what we are looking for. It's going to look pretty much like this. So that's fine, but we do need to make a couple of changes to this pattern. Now, if we're going to be making this one dart bodice pattern into a two dart bodice pattern instead, which a lot of people have a one dart as their block, so it's fine to leave it with just a single dart as well, if you should like. Um, another marking you're going to want to take from this tissue paper version is this point here, which is probably their version of indicating the apex or the like center bust point. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this mark onto my other tracing. So I've transferred that um, X marks the spot apex marking onto my pattern here, and then I've just squared up a little bit from my dart here, um, parallel, making my ruler parallel with this center front. I've just kind of put it here and then squared up from the dart to that apex point. And then to create the second dart to open up into the side of this pattern, I've measured two and a quarter inches down from the armhole and marked a mark there. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect that mark to the apex as well. And then I will slash along this line 
to the apex and I will slash along that new line to the apex and then this section will be able to swing free and we can take some of this fullness out and open it up into the side. All right, so now I have slashed up through the main dart here and into the area where I want to put a side dart and then I can go ahead and close off some of this fullness here. Let's say, I don't know, about a third of that dart, maybe a little more. We can, you can do, I mean, you don't, because you don't have to have this dart, <laughs> you can do almost however much you want. If you want to have a slim dart up here, if you want to have a larger dart up here, whatever you, uh, whatever you feel like for your block, whatever fits you best, whatever you like best. Maybe you don't like as big of a pinch out of the side of your garments. Um, think about things you've made before, things you liked about certain patterns before or disliked about other patterns you've used before. Um, when it comes to creating your own patterns, you get to make those kind of decisions. So take the your favorite elements from other patterns you have used and use that for your block pattern. A block pattern doesn't have to be standardized into the standard sloper. Um, a block pattern is, if you imagine yourself as a designer, as a brand, that is your like most, your base style for your line. And as we know, as we know, every Every store, every designer's garments fit differently and some fit you better than others. Same is going to be for your personal brand here. What you make your block to be like is how you like your garments to fit most. And then anything you draft from this in the future, if you decide to take this fullness, for example, and put a dart up into the neckline instead, or use that as fullness or use this as gathering, things I've done on my channel before, um, you just, you know, your block is your starting point. And I like to keep it quite basic. I like to keep it just like this. But if you wanted to have a single dart, if you wanted to have only a side dart, you do you, mate, you do you. Uh, I just think it's a good to start with a pattern like similar to this one where there is classic darts doing the shaping and the shoulder line sits along the shoulder where it's supposed to and there's a set in sleeve. These are all elements of a good basic block in my opinion. So that's why I've chosen this one and I'm showing you showing you this basically. Um, mostly I just want to get across that like if you have things like this in your stash, if you've made things like this before, maybe you've already done modifications to make them fit you better and you have something like this in your stash, you've made it a couple of times, this is not that far away from having a block that you can use to draft other patterns. So I just want to, you know, really spread the, the, the uh, gospel of if you have a basic block pattern and you might have one and you don't even know it, you know what I'm saying? So if you've used something like this before, a two dart bodice, a single dart bodice with a regular shoulder kind of line and a neckline that's easily, like very, very simple like this, easily raised, you basically have a block pattern already in your stash. You just have to make a couple of modifications and it'll be ready to go to draft other things. Anyway, uh, today I'm on my soapbox, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe close this, let's say halfway, and this will be opened up and I will put some other paper underneath here and um, like tape up this dart. Hello, future Bianca here, just cutting in while I'm editing this video. I realized I forgot to mention something about this side dart up here. And anytime you move a dart around, you can do that slashing and spreading and move darts anywhere you want. By the way, you can go down here, any anywhere you want. You can put them into the front even, you can put them up into the neck, into the arm. But uh, I digress. The reason I wanted to jump back in here was to tell you that um, we use the apex as the point from which to swing our darts around to open them up, close them, things like that. So when we just opened this up and filled this in with paper, the dart was coming from exactly the apex, the exact bust point here. Um, and we don't want, when we sew our dart, to have it go all the way to that point unless you want to have a serious, very pointy bust situation. So you're gonna come out from there into the middle of this new dart that you just opened up and put a mark 5 eighths of an inch back out towards the dart, the, the width of the dart, I guess. Um, so put a dot five eighths of an inch away from the bust point and then connect that to your original dart legs and that is the dart you will sew. Um, we swing from the apex, we use the apex when we are drafting, however when we're sewing we need to come back out away from the exact center point of the bust unless you want to have a very pointy, again, situation. But if you're looking to have a very conical shape, a very, very conical shape, go ahead and go all the way to the apex. But I just realized I forgot to mention to do that when I was doing this last night. So just cutting in here to make that very crucial point. Now, how I get the proper uh, like triangle or shape down here at the dart, at the end of the dart, now that I've moved them around a little bit, is I'm just going to close the dart like it will be sewn. So I'm folding it like it will be sewn and then I'll just slice off that extra and it will give me the correct shape I need. And I'll do the same for the waist dart as well. So I just folded that and then sliced off anything that overlapped and did the same down here, took off a little 
you know, piece here that was no longer needed. And so now I have turned this one dart bodice pattern into a two dart bodice pattern. The next thing I have to do to make this more like a sloper fitting shell slash block sort of usable little uh, pattern drafting shell for us is to raise this neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape in some more paper up here and then I will raise this neckline a little bit as well. More paper up here. I extended this center front line up and I extended the shoulder line up as well because I wanna bring this neckline in uh, up against the neck and also towards the neck this way because it's like a, a little bit of a, I guess it's not a full boat neck, but it's leaning towards that direction. So I wanted to bring it up a little bit and in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up about two inches, come in about one inch, draw a new neckline in. When you cut out the muslin of this, what you're gonna do, like when you're fitting this, go ahead and make this quite close, like go up even higher if you want to, and then just cut slashes in so that it uh, will fit comfortably around your neck. And then you can see where the highest comfortable neckline will be for you. You can go ahead and use a marker while you have the fitting muslin on and draw in that neckline just while you're wearing it. And then when you take that off the muslin, you can transfer those markings onto your master pattern and you'll know what the highest possible neckline is for you that you could have comfortably. And that's what you're gonna wanna put on your bodice front block here. So now that I have the neck modified a little bit and I have this other dart here, I'm just laying this on top of my actual bodice block pattern that I use all the time, just to see how different this modified version of the commercial pattern is. And of course we haven't done that much to it. Um, just lining up that center front here and then kind of lining up the side and we can see it's a little different. The armhole shape is a little bit different. Um, it's about the same width if I line up the center front. So my pattern is a little bit bigger. Um, to be fair, on the back of this one, it doesn't show the waist measurement. <laughs> it just shows the bust measurement. So I would probably, you know, if I were to try this on, would find it a little bit too small. I would have to add a little bit to the waist. I think really what the issue is here is even though this is a D cup pattern, I think I would still need to do a bit of a full bust adjustment for this, which is just gonna add a little bit more fullness through the center of this pattern. It will swing my armhole a little bit um, up a little bit so it would look a little bit more like this, but it's not that far away from my, you know, originally self-drafted for measurements and then modified to fit pattern. So there's not like a drastic, crazy amount of fixing and fitting to do on this. Like I would quickly find out where to make, I have to make a muslin from this, what kind of changes I would need um, if I didn't have a way to compare like this. So it's not too far away from my pattern, even just using those small modifications from the commercial pattern. Um, and commercial patterns are kind of notoriously, the sizing is a little bit, you know, whack every time. Um, but that's where this one is at, the front here. Um, I probably, if I were going to start working with this, I probably wouldn't make any other changes than that. Um, not having this to like reference to, I wouldn't make any other changes. It would, it, was, it would only, it would only be once I cut this out of muslin and started to try and fit this pattern to my body that I would realize what was going on um, and what needed to be changed. So I would realize, of course, that the waist was too small and I could either add a little bit in here or I could add it through the center of the pattern if I wanted to, depending on how much fullness I needed and what the heck was going on. Or if it was just way too small, I would just cut out the next size bigger. Like this is a size 14, I would cut out the 16 and then work down from there. I always think it's a bit easier to take things away than it is to get bigger. Um, so preferably I would cut the larger size and then you know, take this in, make the dart a little bit bigger to take in the waist, take the side seam a little bit in. Um, I think it's easier to go start bigger and then work down as opposed to work larger, unless the uh, modifications are quite small. So that's all I would do to this front before I got started doing the fitting process. As far as the back goes, again, this is extremely similar to what my back of my pattern is. Look, now, of course, this is, my pattern is actually um, flipped the other way and that's incorrect, <laughs> but I just, it's been the way I've done it for a while. and. It's fine, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you look at these, the shape is extremely similar as we can see. Um, this neckline, of course, will no longer match with this one because I've added that little bit at the neckline here. So if I matched up this shoulder, I would need to add that bit to the neck as well. This, however, is already quite high, so I'd probably only add this sliver. So I'll tape some paper in and do that. Now I'm making the shoulder seam match up. This is our front, and because I added on a little bit at the neckline, I'm lining up the shoulder seam again here with the back and I'm just connecting that and adding on what I need to to the back to make that match up 
and just smoothing it into this neck because this neck is already quite high in the back and I wouldn't want to add any more. So I've corrected the back neck of this one. This pattern piece is so similar to my basic block piece or a basic bodice block back that I would just leave the rest of this as is when I started going in to start fitting things. Um, and then this front here is what we already modified as well, or I already modified here. Um, the only thing I would do before I cut this out of muslin and started to see where we were at, how I was gonna start fitting things, if I needed to extend the shoulder more, if this you know ended too far on me, um, if I needed that full bust adjustment still, if I needed a little bit more room at the waist or I needed to take it in the waist a little bit, um, whether I wanted to do that in the side seam or in the darts, depending if it's just a little bit, I might just slice it off the side or add it onto the side. Um, or if it was a bit more, I would split that kind of between this and the darts. Um, but the only other thing I would do before I cut this out of muslin is I find it easier to fit muslins that have a center front opening as opposed to trying to pin them closed in my back. So I would actually use this line, which is the center back line, as my fold and cut that along the fold and then cut extra here and then use this as a um, area to pin it together down the front. Again, drawing that center front line on the muslin so you know where that center front is you know, falling. If it's falling too far open or something, you know, you would notice. And now for talking through kind of the same general things I would do, I'm not gonna do them all over again because this is so similar, um, but doing uh, this pattern instead, the 4769. And of course the main difference here is that this shirt dress probably has a little bit more ease built in just because shirt dresses are supposed to fit a little bit less skin tight than like maybe a sheath dress is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that there's a little bit more ease built into this pattern. But if that's something you like, then maybe starting with a shirt dress pattern is a good way to go for you. But again, we're trying to get this pattern and we have this. And what about this is similar is that there are side darts and waist darts, which is what we are looking for. This is a two dart bodice front here. And once again, this is built so that sleeves can be set into it, which is again what we want. So it has two darts in the back, those four darts in the front, and then that shoulder seam is in the correct, or like armhole is in the correct spot. So that's why this pattern is another good option to start from to build a basic block, basic pattern like this, a simple shell that we can use to make different patterns in the future. So obviously this has more going on though, because it has this shirt front situation going on. And if we look at this pattern piece, we can see that it has, I mean, it has the darts for multiple sizes on here. So let's look at let's look at the tracing actually, because the tracing shows just the darts for the size 14, which is what I've traced. So we have our two darts. This one is actually more of like an angled dart, but that's okay. And again, if you wanted to swing this into one into here, like we just did the slash and spread on the other one, you could. If you wanted to um, mark that apex here and swing this dart into a higher position like I put that other one, whatever you want to do, dart manipulation is actually quite easy. Um, if you want to see me do it more, in many of my videos, I start, like in many of my dress videos, um, I do a lot of dart manipulations here on the channel, so um, it's quite fun watching the darts swing open and close. It's very easy though, no worries. Um, but this has this little notch here for sewing this collar on. Um, and it's hard to determine exactly how much extra is in the front here for this placket for the buttons for the extra needed to make a shirt instead of to have a button closure instead of just a regular, you know, like the other one has that center front on the fold. This one has something going on. However, I think the best option here actually would just be to round this out and then like cut a little bit extra here. And when you do the muslin, like I said, use the front opening on this to your advantage and just have a lot of excess here, pin it shut on you and find where your center front line is and just pin it to fit when you have it on. Because otherwise this pattern has a lot good going for it. It has these two darts already. Um, you might, again, this one doesn't have the cup options. So this might be a pattern where it required a full bust adjustment for someone like me, um, because it doesn't have an option for like a D cup version. It's just this regular and patterns I think are usually cut expecting a B cup, which is just not usually gonna be enough room for someone like me. But again, you can do a full bust adjustment on something like this. I will link to a blog post in the description where I discuss the fitting issues on my own sloper slash block pattern when I was remaking it a couple of years ago, the problems I ran into, and then the resources I found that helped me get through that. It's one of the actually the biggest um, like numbers wise 
posts on my blog, even though it's just kind of a list of resources that I found when I was looking to solve fitting problems. Because again, I personally am not a fit expert. So like, I don't know how to fix all the fit issues. I just am a good at, <laughs> I'm just good at Googling. That's what you have to do. So if you have, you know, if you have a pattern that you're trying to fit and there's something, if it's, there's like weird wrinkle at the shoulder, go ahead and type in Google uh, pattern drafting weird wrinkle at shoulder and you would be surprised how useful the resources that come up are. There are a lot of professionals online or just seamstresses online that have blog posts about how to fit things, have videos, and you can find people who are experts on your certain fit issue, whether that's like the curvature of the spine in the back, the way like your bust uh, maybe sits higher or lower, something to look into, the way your armhole needs to be higher or lower for the kind of fit you're looking for, or like if, even if like a weird wrinkle appearing next to dart, type that into Google and you'll be surprised. They probably can help you out with the different fit issues. So for this one, the only modification I'd make to the front of this is to go ahead and add some paper here and round this out. And then when I cut out the muslin again, I would use this as like a guideline, but I would just go ahead and pin it shut and like see where the center front needs to be on this pattern. Um, again, for the back, it's also super, super similar to what we are looking for. It's a single dart up the center here. Just like the last one, this one comes up a little bit higher. I think this is overall a little bit longer too, this pattern, which if you put it on and it starts like buckling because your natural waist is up here, you just know that you need to cut this shorter and that'll be one of the modifications you make. Um, and then up here, this neckline is actually very close because it's meant to have that collar sewn on. So this one is probably high enough, if not too high. So that'll be fine as well. So for this one, I would really only just curve that out, make a muslin and pin that on and see how it started to go because this is so similar to how the basic block needs to be, which is why I'm, you know, which is why I'm advocating, go through your patterns, see what you have that may have a bodice that will work, that you can modify into a perfectly fitting, simple bodice that you can use from then on to draft other styles. Um, I just really think that there's a lot of potential sometimes hiding in one's stash here, um, stash of patterns in your sewing room. And again, if you have something, a pattern like this, where you notice the shoulder line is in the correct place, it just has simple darts on the front, um, not crazy style lines, not crazy straps or gathering or weird things going on, because those are gonna be harder to take back to simplicity. But something like this that's already so simple, just a single dart bodice and the shoulder line being correct and the neckline's not too whack, you can make a block pattern, a workable block pattern out of things like this. And so this is the, the lazy way to get a block. I mean, still is a lot of fitting and finagling to do, but this is definitely easier than drafting them from scratch if you're not one for lots of measurements and geometry going on. If you get easily confused when you look at drafting instructions, go ahead and find a pattern that looks like almost a bodice block already. Do a couple of modifications and you might just be able to hack your way into having a block pattern. Um, this one also has a sleeve, but again, I think I would just cut this off at the shorter length and use this as a base sleeve. And of course, try setting that into the muslin once you have that. Um, and you can see if there's any fit issues with a sleeve, which again, sleeve puckering weirdly in front, type that into Google and it will help you out for sure. Again, I'm sorry, I'm not a fitting expert, but you know, I'd love to be one day. One, one day when I take some more classes, maybe I will be able to do more instruction on fit. I'm just not something, it's not something I've had a ton of experience with, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know all the things, that's for sure. So once you have your pattern to a almost block, very simple, getting nearer to this sort of place, you are of course going to want to cut it out of muslin and start doing your muslin versions. Now, when I fit my block that I drafted from scratch from measurements, it took me four or five muslins to get it perfect. So I want you to know, do not get discouraged. Do not think it's because you hacked something wrong. Um, you might just be one muslin away from a perfectly fitting block, first of all. Second of all, don't think it's like, this is the, in my opinion, the worst part about drafting your own patterns is getting a block that works for you, but it is worth going through those many muslins and those little fit issues and fixing all the little niggly bits with help from Google to have a block that fits you perfectly. Because once you have a pattern that you know you love the fit of, and it's very simple, like these guys are, then you can do those modifications you see me do here on the channel all the time with with ease, like a breeze. Um, if you have a pattern like this that works for you, 
you can make that little jacket that I made here on the channel. Um, any of any of the designs I do, which I haven't made this, but like any of the designs I do here, you see me do on the channel, I'm usually using my bodice block. And so I think it's important to have if you want to start getting interested in pattern drafting. And of course, again, they make commercial patterns that are fitting shells that are, you don't have to do any of these modifications. You don't have to raise the neckline or play with the darts or anything because they make fitting shell patterns, sloper patterns, block patterns. And you can go ahead and start, you know, from a very good base, something that looks just like this. And then all you have to do is a couple of little fit fixes to make it work for you. And then uh, once you have a pattern you like, I do recommend this. People ask me all the time what this black material is. It's just poster board, like, you know, kids would use to do a presentation for class from the grocery store from Walgreens, I think is where I got this poster board. So do, if you have a pattern you love and like you don't want to accidentally tear or spill coffee on or get the paper version ruined, make a card version to have on hand. I just go ahead and pin them up to my board here and then I can just use them anytime. Trace a new copy every time I want to modify this pattern. I will trace a copy of it and then I'll move the darts around and do whatever modifications I want to do after I've traced this card version. And again, just like these have their seam allowance still, my card version does as well. So the only time I need to add seam allowance is when I cut into this. Um, but other than that, it's all in there ready to go. So that's how I modify commercial patterns to be bodice block patterns. And I just, you know, I kind of just want to spread the word that like, if you have a pattern you like that has a correct shoulder and darts, you too can make a block out of that and you don't have to draft one from scratch. That's, this is the long, very long winded way of giving you that, you know, tip, I guess, is go ahead and make a block out of your favorite dress pattern. If you have something that is, again, simple like this, go ahead and give it a try. I think it's definitely worth it because having a block that fits you, it's such a great resource to have in your sewing room. So that's how I would go about drafting a basic block, bodice block pattern from commercial patterns already in my stash or commercial patterns that are readily available. Again, you can just get a block slash sloper slash fitting shell pattern from one of these companies as well. And then you have to do even less work. It'll come with the high neckline. Um, it'll come with a lot of instructions too. So if you wanna hear other methods about how to fit these things to you, a lot of those patterns will include that kind of information with them as well, which is good because I'm no fitting expert. I've only ever had to fit things to myself. So I've only really dealt with the fitting issues that I tend to have. I haven't dealt with a range of fitting issues. I never had a class on fitting or tailoring, unfortunately. I really wish that would have been part of my fashion degree programming, but it wasn't. Again, I do promise I will be doing the basic block slash sloper slash situation um, from scratch here, from measurements here soon on the channel. We'll see how boring that video turns out. But in, until then, I hope this will tide some of you over if you are eager to get started learning how to do pattern drafting and modifying a block to do different designs and things like that. Thank you as always for tuning in here today, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.